What's up guys and welcome back to my dungeon. Today is time for the performance review of this PowerColor RX 5600 XT. Unlike other models, I'm running the upgraded VBIOS since day one without any issue. If you want to see the VBIOS upgrade guide, the overclocking guide and the card in details, I suggest you to check my unboxing video because now we are going straight to the point and check some numbers. Let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p we have a nice 115 FPS on average and 92 FPS minimum, around 10% more than the RTX 2060. Using a high refresh rate monitor with pre-sync, the experience is very nice, but as you can imagine it's the same also for the 2060. At 1440p we have another solid result with 77 FPS on average and 63 FPS minimum. Again, at 10% more than the RTX 2060 and with both cards you can enjoy playing with a high refresh rate display. With Far Cry New Dawn, at 1080p we have 131 FPS on average and 110 FPS minimum. Once again, the RTX 2060 is 10% behind. At 1440p, with an average of 98 FPS and 78 minimum, this card is performing quite well, but this time head to head with the RTX 2060. In Red Dead Redemption 2, at 1080p, we have 71 FPS on average and 54 FPS minimum, almost exactly the same of the RTX 2060. At 1440p, we have 54 FPS on average and 39 FPS minimum. Now, the RTX 2060, even with almost the same average, shows some advantage with 45 FPS minimum. With both cards, a high detail settings on this game is too heavy to keep a steady 60 FPS but nothing that can be easily fixed tweaking a bit the graphic settings without losing too much in visual quality. If you want a guide to tune this game, Hardware Unboxed have made a very interesting video about it. Check the link in the description below. Now it's time for World of Warcraft. In open world we have another tie with the RTX 2060, 134 FPS on average and 90 FPS of 1% lows. If you have a high refresh rate 1080p display, this card will drive it perfectly, if you have also a good CPU, of course. In Dungeon we see a similar situation, a great performance along with the RTX 2060, but this time with an overkill 152 FPS and 82 of 1% lows. In right we have a different scenario, with a strong 100 FPS on average and 67 FPS in the 1% lows, the RX 5600 is behind the 2060 by 10% and surpassed by the GTX 1660 Super by 7 FPS on average. Ancient wards, rattle the 
chains that bind him. At 1440p, this car can manage a good 114 FPS on average and 79 FPS of 1% loss, 5 FPS more than the RTX 2060. In Dungeon, the 5600 is once again a bit behind the RTX 2060, but still with a good 113 FPS on average and 66 FPS in the 1% loss. Absolutely perfect for a 1440p high refresh rate display. In ride, we have almost 80 FPS on average and 54 FPS 1% lows, very close to the RTX 2060. Riding at this resolution with a high refresh rate display and pre-sync is really impressive. You can have a silky smooth gameplay without compromise the image quality or your wallet, especially now that you can find a good IPS panel that doesn't cost a fortune. by empowering your shiny little heart. The gift of a sleeping titan. Yes, a titan's heart was exactly what was needed. Not to heal the world, but to shatter the prison of a god. Such delicious irony. The Diamond King has been made. A pawn. Lovers' hearts split asunder. Devoted blood spilled freely upon the sand. The song of the deep Since this card has proven powerful enough to drive a 1440p high refresh rate display, I had to test it also in 4K. I'm playing with the Acer X27P that is a 4K 144Hz HDR display with both FreeSync and G-Sync. Once you try a display like this, it's really hard to go back, even to a 1440p. Roaming around the world, doing world quests, this card can do the job pretty easily, granting a stable 60fps with an average of 77 and a 1% loss of 59. In Dungeon, we have roughly the same numbers. This card is powerful enough to allow you to enjoy even a 4K 144Hz display. Even big fights are handled good enough to stay at quality 10. Riding in 4K in the new encounters is tough, really tough. If the RTX 2080 can do 65 FPS on average and the gameplay was pretty nice, we can't expect much from a car that cost half the price. So, even if you see an average of more than 50 FPS and more than 40 FPS of 1% lows with the other cards, the gameplay wasn't smooth. Even with FreeSync or G-Sync, those cards have to be set around quality 5 or with a similar level custom profile to avoid stuttering in order to play without issues. If you want to play in 4K with this card, I suggest you to leave quality 10 in the main graphics settings and check the right battleground option, then start with quality 5 and work your way up. To close this benchmark session, here's the temp and noise. Both cards are relatively cool, around 70 degrees Celsius during long gaming session. The only difference is the 38% fun of the Red Devil against the 60% of the 2060. Keep in mind that the DBA scale isn't linear. 33.6 is almost beyond audible, but 38 start to be noticed even when the speakers are at normal level. To be clear, 38 isn't loud, but for who seeks a very quiet build, it can be a very good point in favor of the RX 5600. At this point, we know that the RX 5600 XT is a good 1440p gaming card, and also in AAA games. My advice is to go with this specific model, since the difference is not uh, that big. But what about the RTX 2060? With the red team, you have the benefit of a cheaper variable refresh rate display. With team green, you have the benefit of a harder encoder and the ray tracing. So if your display supports the G-Sync and you're a streamer, the RTX 2060 is the better option. But in case you have already a FreeSync display and you don't stream or you have a CPU that can handle the encoding, the RX 5600 XT is your card. Now, as always, you know what to do. 
If you have any question, drop a comment down below or join my Discord server. Like the video if you like it, subscribe for more, and see you in the next one.